If you have seen the news over the past several months, Florida has just become a big problem. What? Florida was once a top destination where everybody was moving to since the pandemic. But in the last year or so, it's not so much a favorite destination anymore. And more people are moving out of the state now because they're finding it's not as affordable as they thought it was going to be. Why is it? So the 10 reasons I'm going to share with you why you shouldn't move to Florida, it is mostly financial related. I mean, we talk about affordability all the time, right? And people want to know the affordable places to live. Florida, not so much these days. And by the way, if you're watching this from Florida, if you agree or disagree with anything I'm sharing with you today, just drop a comment. I really want to hear like from you guys that are actually living in this, what's going on. So let's get into it. Here's the 10 reasons. First on the list, it's the price of homes in Florida. Uh-huh. Homes have become expensive in Florida. And I talked about this once before. Back in the day, when somebody here in the Northeast in New York and New Jersey sold their house, they were able to go down to Florida and actually pay cash for a new house because it was that much cheaper. Not anymore. By the third quarter of 2022, home prices had risen over 22% from 2021. Now, as of today, they're not rising that high but they're still going up. I mean, well, let's face it. A lot of states in the country right now are still seeing a rise in home prices, but Florida, it's still expensive. A home in Orlando right now, according to Redfin, the median home price is about $400,000. So if you're looking for that affordability and 400,000 is kind of out of your price range, yeah, Florida's not for you. Number two, the property taxes. I know this was a shock to me and a shock to a lot of people, but in some parts of Florida, the taxes, they're not that cheap. The average property tax rate in Florida is 0.91%. With the rising of the home prices in Florida, now you tack on that 0.91% property tax rate, yet your property taxes are higher. So for example, that $400,000 house, that's going to equate to $3,640 a year in property taxes. Okay. Before you come at me, I know those of us who live here in New Jersey and New York, Connecticut, even out in Illinois, we're paying ridiculous property taxes. I know 3,600 is a bargain, but in some parts of Florida, like Tampa, Tampa's property taxes are almost as high as here in New Jersey. No joke. So really do your research on which towns you want to move to because those taxes could be as much as what you're paying now if, if you live in the Northeast and you have high taxes. Number three, it's the sales tax. People get all excited when they hear that Florida doesn't have a state income tax and they confuse that thinking that, oh, there's no taxes at all in Florida. Um, hold up. There's a sales tax. The sales tax kind of makes up for what they're not making on the income tax. So the combined state and local sales tax averages around 7% in Florida. Uh-huh. And if you want to buy a new car in Florida, expect to pay 6% tax on that purchase price. Yeah, it's not cheap. Do your homework on this, guys. No income tax does not mean that there's no taxes at all. That sales tax is pretty hefty. Next on the list, number four, the health care in Florida can be quite costly. Now, Florida does have some great medical facilities, but it does come at a price. And if you are looking to actually retire to Florida, this is something you really want to pay attention to. Now, if you're on Medicare, Medicare does cover most of the expenses, but you are going to get stuck with some out-of-pocket expenses. So really do your homework on this one before you consider moving down to Florida if you're going to retire. And even if you're not retirement age, if you're younger, still look into that because it could be quite costly. Okay, next at number five, I had to throw this one in there. It's the cost of having swimming pools. Now, as you know, you're living in Florida, a swimming pool is like, it's a must. You have to have one at your house. But when I was doing my research, I found some interesting information. So did you know it costs about $177 a week to maintain a pool in Florida? And we're just talking like an average pool, like 14 by 28 size pool. $177 a week. So it's safe. You get like a torn liner or if you have some plumbing issues, that could be another, you know, hundreds or thousands of dollars on top of that. And if you want a heated pool, expect to pay anywhere between $100 to $600 a month to heat that pool. Mm -hmm. Your total annual pool cost can run you anywhere from $3,000 to $5,000. Yeah. 
That's a lot of money for a pool, but you're in Florida. You, you need a pool. You have to have a pool. So plan on that extra expense. Number six, let's get into the whole insurance thing and let's talk about hurricane insurance. This is a must in Florida. As you know, it's prone to hurricanes. It's had some really bad hurricanes in the past several years. So yeah, those insurance premiums, they're not cheap. Homeowners insurance and hurricane insurance are even tougher to get if you live on one of the barrier islands off of Florida. Now here's something I learned. If you want to spend less money on insurance, you have to pay and get a wind mitigation test. You have to do this on the house that you plan on buying. They want to see how much that house can withstand the wind. Yeah. I'm not joking here. The reason they recommend this is that the cost to insure a home without the wind mitigation systems could be four times higher than one that has wind mitigation systems. So again, another expense, you got to check the wind, you got to see how the house withstands it. I don't know, it just seems like an awful lot of work and a lot of money. Coming into number seven, another reason why you shouldn't consider moving to Florida, and please don't come at me. Look, it's crawling with boomers and no disrespect to the boomers. Believe me, no disrespect at all. I'm Gen X, love my boomers. But for you younger families, if you have contemplated moving to Florida, you have to take this into account. Now, Florida has an estimated population of 21 million people. Right now, 4.2 million residents are ages 65 and older. By the year 2030, the number of seniors in the Sunshine State, it's expected to crack 6 million. 6 million seniors will be living in Florida by 2030. So again, if you're a younger family and you ever thought Florida would be a great destination for you to live, I'd be rethinking that one. Coming in at number eight, another reason why you shouldn't consider moving to Florida, Florida's healthcare is not the best. So hear me out on this one. Now, a recent ranking came out, Florida ranked 22 across all 50 states. Okay, so it's not terrible, but it's not great. And that ranking took into account healthcare access, healthcare outcomes, healthcare costs, and the quality of care. Now, another interesting fact that I learned that South Florida, now that's the most expensive part of the state to live in. A lot of people there do not have health insurance. About 16.7% of people living in Miami-Dade do not have health insurance. 15% of people in Broward do not have health insurance. So yeah, as I mentioned before, that gets expensive. The healthcare is expensive and it is not the best. And I will speak personal experience. I have a relative that was living in Florida for a number of years, went down there to retire, had hip surgery, only for it to have it go wrong. The doctor actually botched the operation. Now she's moved back up here to New Jersey and she just recently had it fixed by a doctor up here in Jersey. So look, I don't mean to be knocking you know, doctors, I have a lot of respect for you, but I'm hearing this, like I said, my personal experience with this relative had a really bad outcome with her surgery down in Florida. So something else you really have to take into account and could be a reason for you not to move there. Coming in at number nine is the condo crisis in Florida. Now look, a lot of people think when they're gonna move to Florida, they're gonna live in one of those big high rise towers, you know, right on the beach in Miami or Fort Lauderdale. But recently, especially in the past year, condos are becoming a big problem and a lot of people are trying to sell them. Yeah, why? Because the HOA fees have gotten out of control and also the insurance. Now you may have heard stories in the past about some buildings, condo buildings collapsing. And I think that had a lot to do with it. It's really put a lot of pressure on the homeowners associations of all these different buildings in these high rises. And it's, you know, fees are just going up and up and people are finding it hard to afford. Now, according to Redfin, the number of new listings, condo listings in Jacksonville and Miami, they rose 30% year over year. What? Yeah, everyone's trying to get out. Now, meanwhile, prices have dropped 7% in the condo market in Jacksonville, and they've dropped 3% in Miami. But meanwhile, if you look at the prices of condos across the nation, the prices went up 8%. So this tells you right here, Florida's got a big problem. The condos are in like in serious trouble there. So if you're looking to move there to buy a condo, I would not be doing it. Nope. Okay. And the final reason on my list, it's, it comes back to the insurance, finding affordable homeowners insurance in Florida. This past year, look, we've all felt it across the country that homeowners insurance is just out of control. That keeps going up and up. I know my rates here in New Jersey just went up 25%. Florida is a big problem. It's gotten so expensive and a lot of insurance carriers have left the state. 
To find an insurance company to insure you is a challenge and an affordable one, that's even more challenging. Now, why is this for Florida? Well, again, it goes back to the hurricanes. Like I mentioned before, you have to get like this hurricane insurance and you also need to get flood insurance. Homeowners insurance only covers the house and damage to the house. Flood insurance is extra. If you're living near the water, you're going to have to get flood insurance too. So with all of those massive hurricanes Florida has seen in recent years, this is why the homeowner's insurance has gone up so much. Another reason why homeowner's insurance has gone up so much in Florida, it's because of fraud. This was news to me. I just found this one out. Insurance carriers in Florida have lost a lot of money from lawsuits stemming from fraudulent roof repair claims. Did you know that? I didn't know that. That was a big problem. So that's led many insurance carriers to raised their rates. In 2021, there were over 116,000 lawsuits filed against these homeowners insurance companies. And it's due to these claims, these fraudulent claims. So who knew? Who knew Florida was in that much trouble with these fraudulent claims? So this is probably one of the biggest reasons why people are getting out of Florida and people would not consider moving to Florida because it's just too darn expensive to insure a home. So look, I know everything is challenging these days and you know you want to try to find like the right place to live. And if you want to know reasons why you shouldn't be moving to Austin, Texas, check out this video right here. Thank you so much for watching me today to get your dose of real estate reality. My name is Jackie Baker and I will see you next time.